Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. And for those of you who do not know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law. And through this channel, I'd like to bring you some stock analysis and also short five minute trading lesson at the end. So please stay tuned. Okay, so let's start with a quick recap of today's trading. So first of all, there was news coming through from India of a possible uh, banning of cryptocurrency including bitcoin this did have a little bit of a negative effect on some of our bitcoin plays such as mara and uh, riot however both did finish in the green Riot was up uh, just below one percent uh, in the green and marathon was up uh, just in excess of five percent i would have expected much much more significant growth but the, this news did did kind of curtail that a little bit so let's have a look at some of our other plays that, um, that we looked at okay overall i think it was kind of a level day with uh, good news in terms of we certainly seem to have seen the end of the market correction the the the, the kind of a little bit of sideways movement now some stocks were going up but not significantly up and, and quite a few stocks were trading sideways with also some going down so kind of overall level so let's have a look at some of the key movers so first of all uh, tick symbol ABML American battery metals this was subject to a short attack that we looked at in the previous video and bearing that attack in mind I was pleased to see that it did uh, not collapse so it was, it was down just uh, over five percent at two dollars and five I think in terms of an entry point for new investors in this uh, consider an entry point around about $1.85 so if you're looking to get into tick symbol ABML a good entry point would be $1.85 at this stage uh, let's have a look at some of the other stocks now okay so tick symbol RBLX Roblox this is a stock that I brought an analysis for the previous day and I did invest in this one and today this closed up in excess of 3% at $72.17 so quite a a healthy day there uh, we also have tick symbol iqstl this is also a stock that i invested in a few days ago and this was also up today a very good uh, increase of just in excess of 10 percent at one dollar 27 so that's tick symbol iqst so again if you want to look at a strike price for this anybody who's not invested certainly consider an ent entry on this one uh, anywhere around $1.10. Okay, another stock that did well today was tick symbol CTXR, um, Citius Pharmaceuticals, and this is a stock that I also did um, a stock analysis for. This closed up just in excess of 7% at $2.06, so congratulations to everybody who managed to get in this. And again, if you're looking for an entry point in tick symbol CTXR, uh, certainly consider an entry point around about $1.80 so if you can get into this one at $1.80 and another stock that I talked about uh, yesterday was tick symbol ZOM Zomedica this is doing certainly very very well with the upcoming catalyst and potential generation of revenue new going to be fairly imminent this was also up in excess of 8% so this one uh, is, is certainly doing well tick symbol ZOM closing at $2.49 so I think as I said in the previous video I think it's very very close to reaching a record high uh, if there is a pullback in this certainly consider an entry around about $2.20 okay so stock analysis for today is for tick symbol LKCO Lukong Technology this is a stock that I also looked at previously in another video so please refer back to that as well so uh, we have had tremendously good news today. The stock uh, went up quite significantly in excess of uh, 53% at $1.64. So good news there. So let's have a quick recap of one of the first catalysts that we had to indicate this on March the 11th. So this is a headline here from Yahoo Finance. Lu Kong announces NASDAQ withdrawal of delisting notice and confirmation that trading in Lu Kong ordering shares will continue until 8th of may 2021 so this is confirmation that uh, there is an extension here and the uh, restrictions might not take place until the 8th of may so a little bit of extra time there for investors however there was also some further catalysts that i'm going to share with you today as well 
Okay, so the first breaking news that came through today uh, is uh, we're going to look at a headline from the Financial Times and the headline is Xiaomi rallies in US trading ban reprieve. So certainly a very, very strong positive headline here. Let's have a look at what happened. So the shares in Xiaomi rose in excess of 10% after the court blocked investment restricting uh, looking at restrictions against the Chinese smartphone maker. So I've just highlighted uh, another important thing that affects our stock here. And that is something uh, I'm just going to share with you here. And it's basically saying the judge called the US case against the Chinese smartphone, smartphone maker deeply flawed. So certainly that's a strong indication that it, it's likely to, highly likely to be a similar outcome with uh, Tixenville LKCO with our stock. Uh, certainly there are talks in social media that the judge is, is going to be possibly the same, in which case uh, the decision will certainly seem to be favourable. Okay, so I'm just going to share a few more points from this uh, ruling here for Xiaomi. So first of all, we can say that obviously there were no grounds for the case. It was kind of more based on speculation. Uh, the other thing that we can see here in the fourth paragraph down, which I'm going to share with you. Uh, first of all, the, the judge did say that there was a lack of substantial evidence to support a finding that Xiaomi is part of uh, any military company. Uh, so Xiaomi said it would continue to pursue the case with the aim of having the court permanently remove its label as a Chinese military link company. So positive news there for Xiaomi and a very, very strong indicator that it's going to be positive new for ticker symbol LKCO. This was reflected in the share price today, closing up at uh, $1.64. So congratulations to everyone who invested in this. Certainly the momentum is looking very positive now. Okay, so the final news story I'd like to share with you now is dated March 15, 2021 today as well. This is from BOV News. And this, the headline here is Big Opportunity is Coming, Lukong Technology Corporation. Uh, so this is confirmation of purchases of, uh, from institutional investors into ticker symbol LKCO. So what this does, this gives us confidence as investors in terms of uh, the company going forward. So we have confirmation of institutional investors, the first institutional investor, that we have confirmation for is Citadel Advisors LLC. They have bought uh, 109.3 thousand shares. The other institutional investor we have confirmation for is Virtue Financial. They have bought in excess of 57,000 shares. And the third institutional investor is Two Sigma Securities. They bought in excess of 35.9 thousand shares. So just to finish off now, in terms of a strike price, one more thing that I would like to add on is certainly it's not a done deal this company is not off the list yet they have not won the case it's still a high risk play the news is good the potential is good but the risk is still there so that's something that we need to be aware of so if you're prepared to invest in this still certainly at the moment it's looking at one dollar 64 i think there will be a little bit of a pullback uh, certainly this week and I think this uh, a good entry point in here going forward will be anywhere around about one dollar twenty five. So for this, if there is a bit of a pullback, uh, and I think there there possibly will be, certainly consider an entry at one dollar twenty five. Okay, so it's now time for lesson of the day. So before we do that, I'm just going to give a shout out to Zishan Raja. So Zishan was the first person to get yesterday's brain teaser correct so well done Zishan I'm just going to read out your answer he has correctly pointed out that today is the 1st of January Suzanne's birthday is on the 31st of Jan December uh, if she was seven the day before yesterday which is the 30th of December she will be turning eight the next day however today is the 1st of January correct which means this year she's going to turn nine next year she's going to turn ten so very well done there Zishan so let's go on today to the lesson of the day today, which we are going to look at, which is um, the PEG ratio. Okay, so the PEG ratio, also known as price to earnings or PE ratio, is a, is a common term that you will come across. So what does this mean? How can we use it? And what does this tell us about investing in a company? So first slide here, I'm just gonna share with you. Uh, it's a metric that is used to value stocks. So it's, it's there to value the stocks. 
however, what you have to be careful about, it doesn't take into account all of the factors. So for example, the growth rate is not taken into account. Uh, so let's have a look at um, what, how this is used in terms of um, calculations. Okay, so in terms of calculations, we've got the formula there. So it's price to earning ratios divided by the earnings growth ratio. So that's the formula for the PEG ratio. Uh, so let's have a look at two examples. So we have company one and we have company two. So company one, the price to earning ratio is 18 times earnings. Uh, the earnings growth rate is 12%. You simply divide the top number by the bottom number and that gives you a PEG ratio of 1.5. Now we have company two and there. Uh, earnings is 22 times earnings. You divide that by their earnings growth rate, that's 16%. So their PEG ratio is 1.38. So what do these numbers mean? The 1.5 and the 1.38. How do we know which is good, which is bad? So let's have a look at that now. Okay, so this is the general guidance that most analysts and most investors uh, with experience will follow. So these are the general indications. So a good PEG would be under one. A fair PEG would be equal to one and a poor PEG will be over one. However, one more thing I'd like to share with you is that this is not necessarily always the case. So there are limitations. So I'm just going to finally finish off by showing you some limitations. Okay, so if you have a look at the screen here, these are some of the limitations. First of all, uh, it makes assumptions that may or may not be valid. Uh, so, for example, if we use a five-year growth rate, that's a long time. So we don't know what, what's happening in the meantime. So a five-year growth rate could basically mean there's significant growth in year one, year two, but no growth in year two, three, and three, four, and five. So it doesn't always tell the, the truth in terms of uh, when the growth happened. So that's first limitation. Second limitation, it doesn't take into account variables that could add or take away from a company's value. So for example, does the com company keep a lot of cash on the side? Is there a lot of cash on their balance sheet? And the PEG ratio, when it looks at this, will, will ignore this. So it won't take this into account, so it will not know. So that's another limitation. Uh, the other thing, the other important limitation that we need to ca uh, be care careful about is sometimes companies are very slow growth companies or value stocks. So, for example, if a company trades 15 times its earning and it's grown maybe by 5% a year for a long, long time, decades and decades, the PEG ratio of three may look expensive, but it does have a strong track record of steady growth. It's a safe stock. Uh, and the stock could still be a good value for investors who are certainly looking for safety and stability. So the conclusion is uh, you, it's a, certainly a good idea to look at the PEG ratio. So have a look at, out for that, but look at the whole picture as well. So look at the company, look at the growth rates, look at the market, look at the situation, what's going on. And as we have all seen as investors, we have seen some things such as the correction can just basically destroy all the rules. And in a worst case scenario, we can have a crash such as in February and March 2020, which will also destroy all the rules. So uh, the, investing in the stock market is always going to be risky and never it can also be risky for individual companies where it's just one piece of bad news and the stock can collapse. That certainly happened with the stock uh, that I brought uh, I informed you about earlier, tick symbol UAVS, going from $15 at one point to $5 when the rumor of their deal with um, Amazon was uh, stated to be false. It has made a bit of a recovery at $8 now, but that's all it takes for a share price to collapse. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned.